When we saw what the storm surge from Hurricane Ike did to the Bolivar Peninsula almost 12 years ago, it greatly increased our concern about what would happen to Galveston Bay. Dr. Philip Bedient was working on that problem many years before Ike. He is a professor of engineering at Rice University, the director of the Speed Center at Rice, which stands for Severe Storm Prediction, Education, and Evacuation from Disasters. Dr. Bedient, how concerned are you that we are um, about close to having the big one cause some problems here in Galveston or, and, and the infrastructure and what can be done about it? Well, I'm very concerned. Uh, thank you for your interest. We've been studying this problem uh, ever since really Katrina and especially Ike and Laura was a very close call. We really dodged the bullet there. And if we get a direct hit from one of these really big storms, a Cat 3 or a Cat 4 in and around the Houston Chip Channel, uh, we will have and create a national environmental disaster that nobody has ever seen. I've seen a lot of the work that you've done at the Speed Center. It is fascinating. Let's talk about the Galveston Bay Park proposal and how that might help mitigate some of the storm surge. I tell you that I looked at the video and it looks fascinating, really, uh, being able to build up park-like islands, if you will, that would be able to make a difference. So we'll let this video roll as you talk about what this could mean for this area. <laughs> Yeah, the, the park plan is uh, something that was uh, that began back about 2015, 2016, and then we did a lot of analyses with Rob Rogers Partners, architects out of New York City, and they really, along with Jim Blackburn, they really came up with uh, this, this visionary design of putting a 10,000 acre park along with a storm surge barrier out in, in the bay, in the middle of the bay, along and running sort of parallel with the Houston Ship Channel then crossing over with a gate, uh, a navigation gate, and then connecting back into the Texas City Dyke. With 25 feet of full protection, uh, we think it can be uh, uh, extremely important in terms of protecting against storms like Laura, like Hurricane Ike that come in and, and, and impact the west side of Galveston Bay and the Houston Ship Channel. I, I found it fascinating. I went on your site. I saw the video. I've linked it to my website so people can go to the newsmakers page and do that. Let's talk about the cost of this, that, that sort of thing and how long it might take to make that happen. We think we've, we've done estimates on that and we think the costs are in the range of five to seven billion dollars, uh, which is which is, uh, you know, money that it could potentially uh, be, be even portions of it could be found in the in the local or state coffers, uh, and also we think it can be built in a relatively short period of time, uh, maybe maybe five to seven years, and that's kind of what we have been uh, been shooting for all along. Something that can be built sooner than later. Now, don't get me wrong, mm -hmm. we we really need a coastal spine, and we're we're big supporters of that coastal spine, but it's it's uh, 2035, and and it's also. Uh, 20 to 30 billion dollars we hope it gets built but i'm not sure that we can afford to wait all the way to 2035 because we will we will get another hit within that within that time period so i do want to invite you and your co-director of the speed center jim blackborn on for a full show discussion to talk about this because it, it is fascinating we can get a lot out of that before i let you go are you optimistic or pessimistic about something being put into place before we get quote the big one I am actually more optimistic now than I have been in years, uh, partially because of all the things that have been going on recently with the Port of Houston, with the mayor, with Harris County and others that are beginning to support this, this proposal. And with the idea that uh, in fact, maybe, just maybe with, with the close call from Laura, now people will begin to take a stand and, and move this move these types of projects forward. Well, I'm glad to hear that optimism from you, Dr. Beattie, and thank you. I invite our viewers, by the way, to go to the Newsmakers page on ClickToHouston.com to see more about the great work that they're doing at the Speed Center. Dr. Beattie, thank you. I look forward to seeing you and Jim back on real soon. Thank you so much for your interest. We appreciate it, Cambrell. Appreciate thank you.